things. And they're doing that with not very much regard to how that actually affects clinical operations, which of course then means it's trickling into the care that is received by the community that that particular system serves. And so one of the things that I was finding as I was, you know, nearing the end of my career in academic medicine, when I realized uh, it's time for me to walk away, <laughs> is um, there's there have been these like ongoing projects to 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 make medicine more efficient, and what it eventually and not even eventually what 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 they were bringing in is a model much like Toyota factories. That's those are meetings that I sat in. Those are planning projects that I was on as a nurse consultant when I worked in. How do we make medicine work as efficiently as Toyota is able to do in their inanimate object factories. <laughs> they, they want the treatment of people to look like the production of cars. And so you understand then how I, you understand, right? Do I need to spell that part out? I'm not going to spell that out. I'm not going to spell out the problem in seeing human beings coming through a medical process for healthcare issues being treated and compared to cars being built in a factory. I'm not going to spell that out. But what I wanted to say is there are many doctors and oftentimes in my experience, it's been the it's been the great doctors. It's those excellent doctors who are absolutely adamantly opposed to the new models that these academic medical spaces are rolling out. And so I'm having this conversation not to excuse or, you know, make justifications for the medical industrial complex. I want to just take this moment right now to put this disclaimer in. I am not excusing. I am not making justifications for. I'm sharing information, as I always say, so that you can pull from it what you need to pull from it so that you can navigate these systems with an understanding of how the system works so that you can get exactly what you need to walk back out of that system, a healthy and whole individual. And that while you're in that system, that you are regarded as an individual person who is, who absolutely should have respect and dignity in the care that is given to you. Okay, so no excuses, no justifications. This is information for you to have so that you better know how to navigate your way. It's like people used to tell me back in the day, why do you talk to your kids about race so much? Because you're just going to scare them or you're just going to make them believe that the world outside is bad. I talk to my kids about race a lot because I have two, I had two young black boys who were eventually or, and now are growing into black men who have to know how to navigate this racist society that we live in. I didn't make the, the, the society racist. It's been like that since 17, 16, whenever they got here, 16, 19, I didn't make it. My kids didn't make it. Me telling them about it isn't go, isn't what's making the the society racist. 
but I'll be damned if I let my two black boys go out there clueless as hell so that they can roam around all willy nilly. I keep telling you, I'll be walking into these hospitals all willy nilly so they can be rolling around in these streets all willy nilly thinking life is all great and good. And life is great and good. Life is great and good for them at this moment because they understand the system in which they live. And I've had to teach them how to navigate their way and their, and their father and their, you know, like other family members, like we've all had to teach them how to navigate their way around so that they can have a good life. Right. So it's, this is the same thing. I didn't make the medical, me telling you that the medical industrial complex is racist is not me making it racist. It's racist. And so you can be one of the people who goes in there all willy nilly, believing that these people care about you because they have MD behind their name and wind up one of these women tweeting on damn social media, hoping somebody comes to your, or you can get this information the way that I'm sharing this information and know, you know what? I better arm myself with some questions before I walk in there. I better have an idea of what's going on with me. I better know that if this doctor starts talking crazy to me because I ask questions that I need to just pick up my purse and walk out. That's what this is about. So anyhow, black doctors and academic medicine. So that's what I wanted to say. A lot of these doctors are opposed to this, um, this businessification. <laughs> that was not a good, I tried it. I tried it. It didn't work, <laughs> but they don't like it, right? They don't like, um, these new business models that are coming out. And the reason, the reasons that they don't like it are the same reasons that we don't like it. You all just didn't know that it's being forced upon them, right? So things like time regulation, when we go into the doctor and we're like, why is it that I get here 10 minutes early and the doctor can be an hour late, but then the day that I come 15 minutes late, they want to reschedule my appointment. Or I came in here and sat for an hour to see the doctor for the appointment to only last 10 minutes. And I'm still not even sure what's up. Right? We all have those experiences. I know it. I know it. I know it. Because I was working in it and I heard all of your complaints. Every single last one of them. I used to have to read through them and find something to do about them. And there was not very much to do because that time regulation is not coming from your doctor. Your doctor is just as angry. It pisses them off just as much as it pisses you off because they're only given so much time and then they're expected to see more and more and more patients based on this business model that all these business experts that are sitting at the top of these chains of command within the hospital system are putting on to them that are near impossible to see that amount of patients and render great care in an actual, in the actual setting of clinical time. And so that's one of the things that they hate. They also hate that it makes them have less face-to-face time with you. One of the things that people complained about when the um, Affordable Care Act was passed and then by 2014, every hospital and clinical uh, space was expected to be working on EMRs. And one of the complaints that many doctors had is that putting everything on EMRs meant that they were not able to just look their client, their patients in the face and have meaningful conversations. Now, what I will say about that is I never understood that because when I was in nursing school in 2000, 2001, within the army system, 
we were already on EMRs and there was no paper, like there were no paper charts. <laughs> There was no paper anywhere. There was very little paper. Like I remember we would, the nurses, we would have our own little notepads where we would, you know, take our daily little notes on our clients. It was so cute. We'd fold them up all nice and like each client had a rectangle and you, <laughs> so we'd put our little, I was, oh, I just remember those days. Like I really felt like I was somebody, but I really felt it right. Like every day I was like, Ooh, put on my scrubs get my stethoscope out, <laughs> fold my paper like I see all the veteran nurses folding their paper, put their notes on, right? But that was it. That was it. When, and that was in, like I said, that was in 2000, 2000, 2001. 2001 was when I graduated. And so then we get to 2014. And at that point I was working, um, I was working on the administrative side at that point. And we're rolling out EMRs and all these doctors were pitching fits and like just angry, right? Like very angry that they were being forced to use these computers. And the, 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 the number one complaint about that was that they didn't, the compute, even the way the rooms were set up when they installed the computers in the rooms, they installed the computers in the rooms in a way that forced the doctor to have their back to the patient. And so that doesn't make for a good clinical experience for either one, for the patient or for the doctor, you know, and the doctor doesn't, they didn't want, they didn't want that because they knew that that would break you know, like that, that causes a barrier between them and their patients. And so we just, we had to be, we had to be creative. Um, one of the ways that the, the, I'll uh, just like one of the places that I worked, one of the doctors, what we determined would be the best system for us was that the nurse would go in and do that initial intake of everything that needed to be in the computer she would pick up the information as we're putting it in outside on her computer in the station. And then she would come in and then she could sit face to face with her patients, right? So we had to find our workarounds, but that's it. The other thing that these doctors have a really big problem with and that they're very upset about in this these business models is that insurance dictates most of what they can do for their patients. And that is pretty, that was, that's another thing that's pretty upsetting because the doctor may believe that a certain medication is the best course of action or a certain procedure is the best course of action. And the, the patient is on board and everybody's ready to move forward. And then the insurance puts this big block in it. And then the doctors have to spend all this time making all of these justifications to the insurance company. And it comes back and then we appeal again and it comes back. And then we, all of this, all of this is taking place because of the way that businesses, uh, that we're, ex that this new business model for medicine is being forced upon them. And so there are some places where we're finding that, um, there are hospitals that are coming up with their own insurance models, case in point, Memorial Hermann. <laughs> we were just talking about, right? Memorial Hermann. Um, and it, it's something that has been working for the past few years. And, but they're the goal, as I understand it from a physician telling me, so I have not read into this myself, but the goal is that by the hospital establishing their own insurance plan within the hospital itself, that then it takes away how much outside insurance companies, like the major ones, like Blue Cross Blue Shield, United Healthcare, all of those, it lessens that dictating that these outside forces can have. And, and it brings back a physician, um, 
I don't know that I want to say a physician-centered care model.